So I heard you paint houses. I am going to paint your house for sure. Oh, okay. For a flat fee. Yeah? Yeah, I'm going to flatten your face. Okay. You know, I don't, uh, I don't care whether you did it or not. That makes no difference to me. Yeah, I don't. I'm here to defend you, right? Right. What do you want to know? You want to know if I did it or not? <laughs> Welcome to This Time with Daniel Chabaz. Today, we are finally talking about The Irishman. The Potato Famine Extraordinaire movie. Yes. <laughs> this has been this is a billion dollar blockbuster of a movie about Scorsese. 100%. Uh, no, so The Irishman is directed by Martin Scorsese, and I feel like this movie has been in development for like decades almost. Oh, forever, yeah. Especially when you see the talent in this movie. You have, you know, Ray Romano being the star, clearly. Mm -hmm. No, you have Robert De Niro. You have Al Pacino. You have Joe Pesci coming out of retirement. Timothy Chalamet. T no, Timothy. No, he's, no, he's, no, he's not in inside. it. No, Timothy. He's not in it, no. Um, Bobby Cannavale. You have so many big names in this movie. The who's who of mob films. Of mob films. Coming into this This movie. is their Avengers. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it is a movie. So this is movie is actually... A ne Netflix film, sorry. It is a Netflix-produced film, correct? Right. Um, and that's huge, because you think of Martin Scorsese and all that's been happening with Marvel and everything. That right. He is such a cinema auteur right. that he wouldn't be a direct-to, I guess, streaming service right. kind of film. But this movie isn't direct-to-streaming service. No. It does end up in some theaters. And right. for us in uh, Toronto here, uh, it's playing at the TIFF Lightbox. Yeah, and it's, it's nice because... Like Netflix, I feel like has really upped their game this year with mm -hmm. you know being a serious contender, and I think when you see a movie like this, this is a pure example of it. I really love this movie. This is a really good movie. That three and a half hours long, you it may think, oh my god, this is going to be hard to sit through, yeah. but the pacing in this film is unlike any other Scorsese movie. He doesn't so, yeah. have even the ending, to, which I think he ends it so perfectly. Like when you want the film to end, you're like, end it now. He and does that black screen, and it's black great. Screen. And I think. He's really, like, when you think about a three-and-a-half-hour movie, you don't really think about... That movie has must be paced great. Yeah. You don't think about that. But this movie actually is, and it, and it kind of flew by the time that we were in there. Yeah. Um, acting all around, phenomenal. And that, I think that's what you expect from the cast that's True. kind of been assembled here. One of the big things with this movie, too, going into it, was the use of the CG de-aging. Right. And I gotta say, like, it worked really well. Like, mm. you don't really notice it after... Like the, there's the first scene, I guess, where you kind of like, oh, they're younger. You may you yeah, you recognize it when you're like, oh my god, because they don't start off old. When they're young in the movie, they start right. off pretty old, right? And then as the film kind of progresses, you see the young versions of themselves. Yeah. So you go, oh my god, that looks a little weird, but it really doesn't. It doesn't take much away. I feel no, not at all. And like the performance is shine through. And out of the majority of movies that we've seen, this de aging or these CG models, like this is probably the most convincing use of them. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Um, and it's kind of funny seeing it too, because like throughout the movie, I was like, okay, which one is De Niro now? Yeah, I, I couldn't tell who it was either. And I mean, I, again, as acting goes, this is this is primarily a Robert De Niro movie. He's, right. He's 100%. pretty much heading it through and through. Um, and then Joe Pesci and Al Pacino are providing just the right amount. Of supporting actors that they need to be because sure. they like it's just so much fun seeing them on screen because they're even at the age that they're at they're killing it yeah and you would almost wanted to see more of them mm -hmm. in certain regards right like everyone's bringing their a game here you can't really it's hard to really talk about what the plot of this is because it's like it's a it's a scorsese mob movie there's a yeah. lot of different characters there's a lot of different things happening but it's about the journey and it's a character piece, and the of anything, characters right? that yeah. you're watching. So you're just kind of watching and see how they all interact with one another. And I think it was just so well done. And this feels like the most true successor to Goodfellas, mm -hmm. more so than Casino and Departed and uh, Wolf of Wall Street, because this feels very much in the vein of a Goodfellas. Yeah, there's a lot of good shots in this movie, uh, literally with the gun and with the camera. <laughs> yeah, um, you really feel it, and I think that. When it when it's on Netflix and you have a subscription, you, you have to give this a watch. And I know that it sucks because you can pause it and everything. Right. I wish if you could go see it in theater and you're willing to see it in the theater, then it's, it's also one of those things as yeah, well. Yeah, for sure. So, what would you say, Daniel? I'd say it's easy to say watch, watch it. it. Um, yeah, and it may be a hard one to find in theaters because there's not a lot of theaters who are picking it up, which is crazy to think. A Scorsese movie isn't getting a wide release. But November 27th, this is hitting Netflix, so you could watch it. 
And like Shay said, you have the option to pause it if you want to. And if that's going to bring you more enjoyment out of this movie, 100% do that. Because it's definitely worth your time. And seeing not only the effects they've used in this and the uh, performances, it's just a really interesting movie to watch. So. And during Oscar season, I wouldn't be surprised if this gets some nods. Yeah, and it's nice. It gives me the vibes of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood of just kind of like living with those characters mm-hmm. and kind of going on their day-to-day adventures with them, which I really yeah. liked. And yeah, I'm. I just it's it's crazy to see like Tarantino and Scorsese back in head to head in a year again. You know? Even seeing yeah, just yeah. Pesci on screen, that was awesome. Oh, so nice to see him back. We will have more thoughts on this on the movie podcast yeah. as we sit down with Anthony and discuss more about his heritage. <laughs> um, what else? That's it. And a new episode of the movie podcast comes out every single Monday morning or Sunday night, Sunday wherever night. you want to listen to it. Yeah. If you want to write and be part of that show, you can at thistimewith.com slash talk. Or uh, leave us a comment on this video. If you've seen The Irishman or if you're planning to see The Irishman, let us know what questions you have. Who is your favorite Irishman? You yeah, know? Who, know. It's Irish actor. In yeah. No, uh, no. I want them to see the Lucky Charms guy. <laughs> uh, but we will address it on the movie podcast or the next review that we do. So that was this time. And we'll see you next. Thank you.